Next guest is uh, an assistant coach with the men's basketball team in his first year at BYU. Practice has begun. His name's Chris Burgess. Chris, great to have you back in studio. Man, thanks for having me back. Okay, to, uh, the the start of uh, BYU official practice was a was a video on social media. Yeah, at like five forty three in the morning or something. I don't oh. even know who it was. Felt, who was that? felt earlier. Who, who was, was walking? Yes, yeah, I don't know who. I was, was trying to figure it out too. I want to know who was videotaping it too. Who <laughs> I think it was Jake Curtis. Was, was it good the, for Jake? Yeah, he's, he's all he's in. The man. Yeah, it was early. And and that's early. and you guys are doing two a days in yeah. football. This has been outlawed. Football kind of yeah. different than basketball in this. Yeah, but you can still do kind of two practices in yep. a day with basketball. We'll give them two practices, two days, and then we'll take a day off. Of course, Sundays will always always be off. But really, in the morning, we're coming in. We're either getting a bunch of shots up, you know, um, as a group and lifting. We're doing like some defensive breakdown shell stuff, and then we come back in the afternoon and we really get after it more on the offensive side of the ball. So it's been going well. The guys have brought so much energy the first two days of two days. Um, we got dudes who want to compete. Like it's 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 been really fun to watch. But after the first week and the second week, we kind of see how tough mentally these guys are because that's what two days is, right? It's going to test your mind, test the fatigue, and see if you can get through them. Because and that and that's the WCC tournament, right? And that's mm -hmm. that's March. Um, where are you at mentally? So on Tuesday, during the media availability, uh, Coach Poe pulled his best Ashton Kutcher and uh, punked all of us in the media. Oh, man. Oh, man. And I mean, hook, line, and sinker, we all bought it. I, I couldn't see my own face, but I know it was probably my jaw dropped when he, he mentioned that the TJ Haas will be back next year <laughs> after having knee surgery. Now he quickly you know, yeah. changed that and said he, he'll be back in about 10 days. How is TJ progressing? He's, he's doing – he's progressing fine. Yesterday he actually got on the court and did just – Really easy closeout drills, slide drills at about 50%. Um, you know, when you have a scope, it's just about time, healing, but also kind of pushing it a little bit where you get your body comfortable with kind of the pounding, movement, cutting, and things like that. TJ's going to be fine. He's a gamer. You know, he, he's going to get back. He's going to be healthy. We miss him on the court, but it's also allowed guys like Connor Harding to get some one repetition. It's allowed Blaze Neal. Right to get some one repetition, just allow Jesse Wade to get some one repetition. So, it's good, right? Guys have to step up, and the same with Yoli being, you know, out the first nine games. It's allowed guys like Dalton Nixon, right, to to be on that first five and get some repetitions playing with the first five. And so we're kind of seeing a taste of what our team is without, you know, two of our big three in Yoli and TJ out. Uh, Zach Selyus broke his foot yeah. on the Italian trip. How's his recovery? Good. His mustache is growing in nice. Oh. I don't know if you guys have interviewed or seen oh, that. Gosh. I haven't seen him. <laughs> his, mus seen him. his mustache is growing in nice. Um, he's still on the kind of scooter right now. The boot is off. He's in the pool up there at the SAB, getting a bunch of things in there. His, his just, he needs time to heal. But he's doing everything he's capable of doing right now, upper body, he's doing. Like he's, I mean, I think he's putting on a bunch of muscle just upper body because, you know, he's on the bike doing his forearm things. He's lifting and he's doing everything so much upper body. So he, we can't wait for him to get back. But at the same time, you don't want to rush him because it's a Jones fracture, right? It needs time to heal and you don't want to have any setbacks. We miss him. Like Zach, he's a senior, right? He's a leader. He's a voice. But he's been great on the court helping some of these new guys, return missionary guys out just with his voice and teaching them on the sideline as they're coming off, right? And that is very valuable um, to our young guys. But also to Zach, when he gets back in, he's already been talking the game right from the sideline. That's been nice. Now that the schedule is finalized and you can look at it as, as a whole, how yeah. do you evaluate the schedule? I think it's tough. I think it's a big time schedule. Um, you, you talk about some of the top teams in Mount West. Um, you talk about Maui, UCLA, and you know Coach Cohen is going to have them the toughest team in America. It's just his, you know, it's just been kind of his DNA of his teams. Um, you talking about at University of Utah, we're at Houston. So we know that this schedule um, is going to really push us and challenge us. And we're going to go through probably some ups and downs in adversity, and we're going to see how tough we are. And we can make excuses those first nine games, right? Oh, we don't have Yoli. And we can make excuses. Or guys can step up, and we can battle, and, and we can play together and come together as a team and see what we're made of. And if we do that, we're going to hit the WCC, hopefully in stride, ready, ready to take it over. And that's certainly the goal because there are fewer and fewer bids for teams like BYU yeah. as an at-large, right? And Dave Rose, amazingly, did it eight times, it's which amazing. is just insane, right? But like you said, given that Yoli Childs is out for the first nine games, and there is some, a lot of seniors but some youth, you probably want to try and win that tournament as your best option, 
to yeah. get into the NCAA tournament. Is that an easier option than at large? I think opinion? all options are really hard. It goes back to Coach <laughs> Rose, how amazing that is. He did that. Yeah. Um, we want, I mean, we want to win every game, but we also want to grow and get better every game. Um, we talked about it all the time as a staff the last four years. We, we wanted to get better every single game. Even in you know the Dove CC tournament after round one, coach talks about this. We want to be better the next round. And so it's it's one of those things like we want to win every game. We want to give ourselves the best opportunity where the locker room's feeling good and confident that we go into the Dove CC regular season and the tournament feeling like we can beat anybody in on the court that we play that day. Um, and to beat a team like UCLA or beat a team at Houston and to beat a Utah State, pick number one, right, win the, the Mount West, that'll help us. And so that's what we're getting ready for right now. How would you describe the system that you guys will run this year on offense and defense? And yeah. how, how have the guys been at picking that up? Really good. We feel like we've got three guys who can really score it in and, and, and TJ, Jake Toulson, and Yoli. Um, we like to run a system where it's really spaced, allow our shooters some creativity. But you got a guy like Yoli, who's, I think, I, I really mean this, one of the best short rollers off of ball screens in decision making, whether it's finishing at the rim, finish with a floater, or finding the open man because he draws a ton of attention. Short roller, you mean he gets the ball quick? So, so he he then... sets a screen, he rolls, and they give him kind of a quick pass. And now, kind of like mm. Draymond Green has, where Draymond Green gets to make all these decisions based mm. on what the defense is getting him, right? You see Draymond kind of make the corner pass, he's got a floater, he throws that lob pass right, to um, keep on Looney. And I think we have that with Gavin, right, with Dalton, things like that. So, so who's Steph Curry is the real question? Steph, probably TJ or Jake. <laughs> and Clay, right? My, my job's easier if we got Steph out there. <laughs> um, so we'll, we'll have a space, we'll have a lot of creativity, we're going to have a lot of ball screen stuff. I feel, I feel like we can really score in the post. I, if you look at analytically, Yoli, He's over a 1.06. It's like the top 5% in all of college basketball last year. In what? In the Points. post. When he, gets, when he gets the ball in the post. He's Points one of the per possession. Points per possession. He's wow. like a 1.04, 1.4. 1 it's, it's amazing. Mm. Like, I actually don't even really work with him. I just watch him and learn from him. That's like coming in here. Mm. So we feel like we can get him different, different catches on the block as well as short rolls. Um, we love Jake coming off screens, coming off floppy action, you know, wide pin downs. Um, we love TJ coming off handoffs, ball screens in the transition. We want to play fast. We want to pass the ball ahead. We want to run, run the floor. We think we have the two most athletic bigs in the conference in Yoli and Gav. Like, why not hey, run, run like a deer? And, you know, so we're going to take advantage of that. Defensively, you know, we talked, if you're talking about junking up, we've talked about different kind of one through one stuff, two, three stuff to really take advantage of Yoli and Gavin's length kind of on the top or on the side. Man to man wise, we'll be pretty solid. Um, you know, whether we switch one through four on ball screens, whether we front the post, you know, we're not overly aggressive there, but we want to find a kind of a happy medium of what we want to do. But main thing for us in Coach Pope's system is we're going to really scout and we're going to take away tendencies that we want the non-shooters to take shots and we want to take away the shooters. That's That's been kind of what we've tried to do the last four years, and I, I know that's going to be something that we're going to do this year. How do you develop this group yet prepare them for life without Yoli for nine yeah. games? Because you want to have him a part of everything, but he's not going to be in yeah. this nine. So the first two practices, we've kind of put him on the second squad or the redshirt squad, cause, you know, because we also have Richard, Alex Barcella, and Wyatt Lowell sitting out. So that's Yoli's a pretty been, good group. Yeah, <laughs> so it's been on that group. So they're pushing kind of the blue team or the first squad. Right, and so we're we're doing like we've got our first squad out there who we think potentially will start, right? And Yoli's not on that group, so they're Yoli's getting life with us not to play with the starters, right? Mm -hmm. So he's learning that part, and then our guys, our starting guys, are getting to getting to go against Yoli as a backup or a, or a you know the gray squad mm -hmm. every single day, and so that's how our guys prefer. So Jake Toulson and TJ when he comes back, or Connor Harding, or Jesse, they're play out there not playing with Yoli right now. Like, they're playing against him. Is that how you'll do it until yeah. he plays? That's how we'll do it until he plays. Okay. That's, that's how every time we, when we put together a practice plan, you always on the gray squad. So that group is getting used to getting being Getting used to playing together, yeah. Gotcha. You know, okay. Every single day, and twice a day. How has Yoli <laughs> taken to that? He's been good. He's been good. And he wants to push his guys. But that gray squad is pretty good, right? <laughs> uh, Barcelo is... You guys are going to, the Cougar Nation is going to love Barcelo. <laughs> well, He's got a red shirt this year. <laughs> yeah, Looking we, forward they're going to love him. Year, they're yeah. going to love this kid. Well, yeah. and maybe maybe, maybe that's the answer, uh, even though he can't play this upcoming season. But you've mentioned a couple of guys that impressed you, Yoli specifically. Who's an under-the-radar guy that maybe people aren't talking about that's impressed you so far? Connor Harding. Love him defensively. He can pick up, full, like in Italy, I was, I was really surprised 
how much ball pressure he was given full court, turning guys. And he's been our one guy, you know, we talk about three things for each player, and one has been the defensive intensity, where he's brought it every single day. And we've been playing it out some one, right, with TJ out. We've been playing out some one, playing out some two, playing three. So he's a utility guy, he can play a lot of different positions. He's shooting the ball well. He's, he's, got, he's a big guard, right, so he can make those passes off of ball screens, off of floppy action where he sees over the defense. Um, I just love him on the defensive. And then Dalton Nixon would be the other guy. And everybody, like Cougar Nation knows about Dalton. Like, he plays so hard. He always talks about you can't measure, you know, someone's heart. That dude goes after every single rebound. He can play him at the five. He can play on the floor. Four. He hits, like, he hits everybody who's open. And then he can score it around the rim, right? He, he's, he's just, he's just a, a guy that you need to have on a successful team. Mm -hmm. Does all little things and has one agenda, win. That's all he cares about. Great. And uh, last but not least, Saturday, a BYU alumni. Yeah. Tell us about uh, what's going to happen. Yeah, so uh, alumni have all been invited to come watch practice, and we're going to do a dinner afterwards, and it's going to have a nice little program. <clears throat> We've invited everybody. We're hoping to get... Um, we're hoping to get at least 70 alumni from all generations, including coaching staffs. And our program is going to include some trivia stuff, and we're going to have prizes, and they're going to have gift takeaways. Um, you know, we've done some things, and, and we're going to have five or six guest speakers. Um, so we'll have uh, from all different eras. So we'll have some 90s guys, some 80 guys. I'll get up and kind of share a quick little two-minute uh, memory. There's no way it's two minutes. <laughs> Depends what era we go. If we do the 1970s, we might be there for 30 minutes. But if we do a 2000 group, they might be a couple minutes. So we're looking forward to that. We've, we've invited, we've touched, um, touched a couple guys to, you know, say something and talk about something BYU basketball, including coaches. And it's going to be fun. If you guys know Coach Pope, he likes to go big. And we're, we're going to, you know, we're trying, to, we're trying to push the envelope and what we're allowed to do, what we can do. We're going to have a really fun highlight video. But we just want our, guy, our guys and the alumni to understand that we're trying to build on what they've created and they've started, right? And we want our guys to be around NCAA tournament guys, you know, what it took to win, right? We want our guys and we want the, all the alumni to feel invested where they talk about it. And they all want to come back and invite the guys who didn't make it this year to come back next year. It's, it's our goal and it's, it's really important to us. That's awesome. So if people need to contact and want to sign up, how do they do it? Um, contact uh, Nate Austin. If you contact the Twitter, the Nate BYU Twitter. basketball Twitter, okay. please, it's, it's six to eight. Just come to the annex. Like, right. you know, everybody's invited and they have a plus one. So awesome. we're excited. I love that we're talking basketball. I cannot wait yeah. for basketball season. Okay. Love it. Well, thanks. Appreciate the time. Yeah, Chris. thanks for having me on again. Okay, awesome.